can you all hear me well? Good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your morning tea. So uh, my name is Anita Liebenau. I work at UNSW since 2018. This first slide is just to give you an idea where I'm coming from geographically. So I was born in East Germany near Berlin. So I've come from like a rural area. Uh, I moved to Berlin when I was 16. And then I did my undergraduate degree in some university which is called Darmstadt in West Germany. Uh, but I only was there for two years because then I went for an exchange, which is a very common thing to do in Europe. And I went to Cambridge for my year three and four. Uh, and that's when I really decided, okay, yeah, I, I do want to stay in pure math. I, do want, I don't want to stop after my master. So then I went back to Berlin to do my PhD, uh, back to England to do my first postdoc. And after this first postdoc, um, I saw a postdoc ad from Monash University in Melbourne, and that's when I came to Australia, which was in 2015. Uh, yeah, and as I said, then the only other step was up to Sydney in 2018. So that's where I'm coming from. The only other thing I'll say about myself personally is that I don't, I'm not from an academic family. I don't have a mathematician in my family. Uh, I don't. My mom is the only one in my family who studied. I was the first one to do a PhD. So if you don't have academic parents, don't let that like deter you and not do a like not to do a university degree degree and like not even like possibly think about doing a PhD. It's you are the only one who um, who has it. Uh, good. So I want to tell you about my research a little bit. Introduce you to my research area, which is graph theory. So what's graph theory about? Uh, it's like the study of networks, or like the, theore the theory of networks. So networks, you could think of like um, road networks. So uh, networks consist of like points with labels. So here the labels are like the cities of Australia, and there's a link between any two cities if there's a road connecting them. <clears throat> That's one possible network. Another one is here from chemistry where we have carbon um, atoms and hydrogen atoms and they are linked through molecular bonds and form a molecule, right? That's another application. Or you could think of something like a social network where the nodes are people and you put a, a link between two people if they know each other. Right? And if I talk about graph theory today and about graphs, this is probably the best way to think about it because you only you have those labels, but I don't really care where they are in space and how far they are apart. The only thing I care about is that there are two people and they either know each other or like Ava and Dan, they don't know each other. So it's a one, zero one choice, yeah? Um, Good. The important point I want to make here is the following. So we have real world networks and they are all around you, right? So this one here is a visualization of the uh, cells in your brain and their connection, whether the uh, synapses are firing or not. This one here is a visualization of flights around the world. Uh, there are researchers working on real world networks like Virginia, uh, who talked earlier today, like analyzing the real world networks and figuring out what the properties are. Then at the very bottom, we see graph theory, which puts the foundational theory there. So uh, Catherine, you see, Catherine is here, and me, we work in this theory. So we prove theorems. We say under what theoretical assumptions uh, these graphs have certain properties, okay? Uh, you need these foundations to make informed choices about what would be your appropriate models for these real world networks. So these are like three different areas and you've got researchers in each of them. You can go in as many directions as you could think of. Um, Virginia, I think men or Emma mentioned disease, modeling disease spreading, uh, modeling rumor spreading. These are all possible applications of graph theory, but we work down here. So let's make this a little bit precise um, and think about something, a specific network. Let's think about our network, whom do you know? 
So here are four schools uh, who came in today. Um, my apologies that I didn't put all the schools on here. Uh, and for simplicity, I'll just assume that there are five people here. So I just drew five for each. And my assumption is that if you all come from Strathfield South, can I have Hans, who's from Strathfield South? Anyone here? There, yeah, thank you. So I'm assuming that you all know each other. So I'm drawing a link between all the five people in Strathfield South. <clears throat> Similarly for the other schools. Now, before today, I think none of you knew someone from another school, okay? But after today, because we put you at different tables, there will be some links between these different blobs. Now, what's this small world phenomenon? So I'm claiming that even if you are from two different schools, any, you and you pick anyone other in the room, I think, I'm pretty certain, that you know each other via maybe one other person or two other people or three other people, if I consider all the people living in New South Wales, say, right? So that if you look at all your friends and relatives whom you know, and this other person looks at all their friends and relatives, there might be a link in between. You may need three, we don't know, but like I claim or I'm pretty certain that this con degree of separation is relatively small. <clears throat> now, in, let's try to understand this theoretical phenomenon by looking at the random graphs. So what I will do, I will make some assumptions on the underlying graph and try to get the ideas about why that might be the case. So my theoretical world, I assume that between any two people, there is a link there with probability one half. So for any person in the room, I just flip a coin, and if it comes up heads, I draw a line, and if it comes up tails, I draw a, um, um, I don't put a line there. So <clears throat> I was told, I'm <laughs> okay, so between any two people, um, the probability that there is a link via this person is one quarter, right? Like it's one out of four that something must come up. Um, and so the probability that this particular link is not there is three, it's one minus one quarter, it's three quarters, which is pretty big, but now you need that for all these thousand people to happen together. So the probability that none of these gives you the link is three quarters to 1,000, which is really, really, really small, okay? So that's a little bit of maths I'll do. So. Um, to, um, to be able to answer the questions in the booklet, I need to tell you what the Adish number is. <clears throat> so Adish was a mathematician who worked in this area, and he came up with this idea, let's just put him in the middle. He worked with 1,500 co-authors. He, he co-authored about 500 papers. And so he, you draw a link, Adish has Adish number zero, and um, you draw a link from you to Adish if you co-authored a paper with him. And otherwise, uh, you just look at all your co-authors and you just take the minimum of those numbers from your co-authors and you add plus one. So what's the distance to Adish? That's the Adish number. Okay, and the a remarkable thing about this particular network is that every person, either you ha don't have an Adish number yet because you haven't written a paper, or it's very, very small. So the distance is very small. So that's the Adish number. There's a similar phenomenon it's in acting in films. So that's the Bacon number, where this is Kevin Bacon. He plays in a lot of genres. Uh, so he has Bacon number zero. Uh, <clears throat> and if some actor is in a film with them together, they get Bacon number one. Um, and so you have a distance to that person. And that network is also has the same small world phenomenon that it has a very small diameter. Uh, and then the Erdős Bacon number is just the sum. So two people with very small Erdős Bacon number are Natalie Portman, who has a scientific paper. So she has a finite Erdős number of five, and she has played in a film with someone who has played in a film with Erdős Bacon. Uh, with, uh, Bacon. And Tan Kleidman is a mathematician, but I think I'm running out of time. <clears throat> so I'll, this is my last slide. Um, 
once you, I said you can analyze real world networks and find models, but you can also just do graph theory for its own sake and because it's beautiful. So I leave you with these two pictures here. This is a graph on six vertices and all the links are there. Can you color this um, graph um, so with red and blue? So all the edges get red and blue and there is no red triangle and no blue triangle. And then this, this is the same question, but for this graph with one vertex less, can you do that, color the edges of this so that you don't create a red triangle or a blue triangle? Uh, I leave that to you for you to do for the day. And if that interests you, then I hope to see you in 1081, which is our discrete math course in first year, where you would see this again. Thank you. <laughs>